Hi, I'm Lindsay Dickin, and today we are going to do a, a quick and easy Bichon head. And this is our model Cosmo. And so first thing I usually do when I'm doing the Bichon head is I clip out between the eyes. And so I usually use anything from like a 30 to a 15 or um, just depending on the dog, whatever's not going to irritate him. And I'm just going to shave between the eye corners. So I'll just scoop this out. And then if they have any little hairs on the bridge of the nose here, we'll get that with thinning shears. Um, I also shave right under the nose. So I'll make kind of a circle with my hand and push the hair away. And I'm going to take a 40 and shave just the width of the nose. And we do this because um, when we're showing the dogs, we want to show nice dark pigment. And it also just kind of gives it a cleaner look around the mouth. And I do that on my pet dogs too. So once we have our clipper work done, I'll go ahead and grab some thinning shears. And I'm just going to tame down the hair on the bridge of the nose right here. Just make a couple snips. And that way, when we go ahead and trim over the eyes, we'll have a nice kind of clear view of the eyes. So once we have this done, we'll go ahead and grab some curved shears. And I start by cutting over the eyes. So I'm going to comb all this hair forward, over the eyes, just pull everything forward. And I'm going to lay my shear out at an angle like this. I'm not going to go up and down, I'm going to go out. And I'm going to start trimming underneath. And I'm going to go a little bit past the eye corner. Ah. And we go past the eye corner because when we look at the dog from the side in profile, we want to be able to see his eye from the side. We don't want to have all this hair in front of it. Same thing for the other side. And you can flip your shears if you need to, the opposite way, to kind of get in there. And sometimes you have to comb this area a couple times because the hair tends to curl around the eye. And we want to make sure we get it nice and clean. And I'm trimming this in kind of a soft U shape. So when we look at it from above, we're going to have a nice kind of soft rounded U. Comb it forward. And now we're just going to start working in a shape like this. We're going to start bringing this up and trimming in any little ledges that we have. So it's a nice smooth line. And what this is going to do when we go ahead and fluff the head back is it's going to set the whole shape of the front of the head. So just by combing it forward and trimming kind of a soft shape back like this, it'll really help set that whole front of the head. Go ahead and trim this. Sometimes you have to comb this area a few times because hair always seems to kind of hide up in that little space between the eyes. We really want to make sure that the eyes are really, really framed by the hair. We want it to be a nice, neat line. So sometimes you just got to keep whittling it down until you have a clear view of those eyes. Let's take a little bit more. There we go. And we can come back to that later if we need to because it seems like sometimes little hairs pop up overnight. Or not even overnight. Just, you know, when you're working on something else, you come back and all of a sudden it's a little fuzzy again. But once we have over the eyes set, I'm going to go ahead and start trimming from the bottom of the face. So I'm going to comb all this hair down. And I usually like to hold them kind of right around the nose here so I can get at the chin. I'm going to comb all this chin hair down. And just neaten it up. You don't want to leave the beard too long because we want the bulk of the hair to be here. We want the eyes to be the center of the circle. So if you leave a lot of chin hair, it's going to make it look a little dumpy. So just keep combing and cutting. Your comb is your best friend. You want to make sure we get all these hairs that are kind of hiding up, sometimes get sucked in the mouth. And once we have our chin length set, we're going to go and work on the side of the face. So. 
The thing to keep in mind when you're working on these heads is you always want to keep the ears pushed forward. You can either go above or below, but you want to make sure that this ear is pushed all the way forward because if you let it relax and scissor it, it's going to change when the dog hears a noise or it sees its owner. Sometimes the ears will spring way up and you'll be left with a big chunk of hair on the cheek. Come here, buddy. So I'm going to go ahead and push this ear forward with my finger behind his ear and pull all this hair from behind the ear, just kind of comb it all out and fluff it. And from there, I'm gonna just start rounding in. I'm envisioning a circle shape, so anything that's outside of my circle, go ahead and trim it off. And I never pick up the ears to trim underneath. I always treat it as part of the head. So just keep combing, push that ear forward, and trim. I also will take this ear in my hand and pull it forward and hold it with the muzzle to get out anything that's behind this ear. So you can see there's a little bit of hair right here when we pull this ear forward. Just make sure that's nice and clean. And again, that's gonna help when this dog, you know, he pricks his ears and he hears something, you're not gonna see a big chunk of hair popping out from underneath the ear. So pushing this forward, just gonna continue to neaten up this hair. I'm gonna do the old poodle top knot trick where you comb the whole head. I'll take that off here. We're gonna comb his whole head to one side this way and trim it. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side. I know, you see Papa over there, huh? So once we get this hair combed to one side, we're just gonna go ahead and start trimming in a circle shape. And if you have a dog that's got a lot of length on the head to start with, just try to knock in the shape first and you can go back and neaten it up. Uh-uh-uh, you're all right. He sees his daddy, huh? Yeah. And from there, I can see he's picking up his ears a little bit and I see hair stop popping up from underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get that out of there. Right here, big old chunk. And it's kind of a process. You sometimes have to just take a little bit, stand back and look at it, see what's popping out, what's catching your eye, and just whittle it down from there. Because you can always take more off, but you can't put it back. And I'm just gonna open up his eyes a little bit more here. Because sometimes when these ears come forward, it kind of impedes the view of the eye. So we always wanna make sure those eyes are visible. Pushing the ears forward, always, always pushing the ears forward. And from there, we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm gonna comb these ears, kind of drag everything out from behind it here. This is a spot where a lot of hair likes to bunch up behind these ears, so we wanna make sure that we trim that out. Comb this hair all over to the side we're working on. And I'm gonna start by, again, pulling this ear leather forward and holding it with his muzzle and trimming out the hair behind, just to make sure that this is a nice, clean area right behind the jaw. And that'll really help. Again, when the dog perks its ears, we don't get any nasty surprises. Come here. So comb this. I'm gonna push my hand up behind his ear to keep his ear pricked forward. You can see we've got a little bit of stuff popping out here, so we wanna make sure this is all blended in so it's one smooth, seamless line. and just round everything in. Make sure you are paying close attention. If he you know, decides to lick his nose or open his mouth, we wanna make sure that we don't cut something off that we shouldn't. Accidents happen, but we try to be careful. So I'm just working this into a circle. And sometimes you catch other things on the other side of the head while you're working, but just kind of grab him when you see him. You can see now he's picking up his ears by himself, and so we've got this kind of coming together, but we need to take a lot more off the top of his head to make a circle. So once we have that kind of shaped in, now I need to take more length off the top of his head. Stop, stop, you're all right. Just start little by little working the shape in.
And keeping this hand behind the head is really the key to the whole thing. When the ears are a little relaxed, it might not look round, but when those ears come up, it's really gonna make, give you a nice round shape. You're all right, buddy. Same thing, I'm gonna go back away, or back again to this side. Just to start blending this all together. And again, it stops, stop. If you're working on a dog with a lot of length, sometimes you have to do it a couple times to get it down to the appropriate shape for the body length and the appropriate size. And I also, once I get the, the general shape kind of whacked in, I like to use these blending shears, which have the uh, wide teeth in them. They're really, really handy for this kind of coat when you're doing top knots on Bichons because they're very forgiving and they're sort of like an eraser. So if the dog moves its head and you make an accidental snip, you're not gonna cut a big chunk out of the head. So I'm gonna push these ears forward, stop. See if he'll stand up for us. It's always easier to work on a face when the dog is standing, but he knows dad's here, so he's being a little bit of, little fussy. So I'm just gonna keep his ear forward and soften out any little sticky outies on this face. Stop, stop. You don't want to take too much out in front of the ear because we want the ear to blend into the rest of the head. So if we were to cut this hair out, you can see that you would see the ear shape. So we have to leave this hair in front to sort of hide the break in the ear and make it look like one seamless piece. But you still want to take a little bit off this outside edge just to blend it all together. You're all right. And I can see we've got a little bit of hair hiding down here that needs to come off. So I'm just gonna clean that up. But you notice I've, I didn't pick up the ear to trim it, I just let it hang where it is. You're all right, big guy. Same thing, push this head forward, fluff it all out. and then just blend in anything that's kind of popping out. And you want to keep in mind that any way you look at a Bichon head, it should be a circle. So from the front, it should be a circle. From the top, you should see a circle. And then from the side, you should see a circle also. So it's one thing to keep in mind. It should be a circle when viewed from any angle. And you don't want to see any obvious pieces of hair kind of hanging anywhere. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this back of the neck because it's kind of throwing my a little bit by taking our blending shears. And just making everything look like it's fitting inside our little circle. And sometimes you get dogs with funny ears that kind of bend the wrong way and you just have to do the best you can. But his aren't too bad. Come here, I know. And I'm just gonna keep working at it to make it nice and round. And sometimes it's just like we're grooming in our own shop when you know the owner comes a little bit early and they're looking around, so you just kinda make the best of it. I know. But you can see that my hand is always on the dog holding the ears forward. I'm just gonna comb everything out one more time. The chin, the ears, stop. And then we'll do one more pass with our blending shears. Uh-uh, no, no. Be a good boy. And if you have a dog that's got kind of a different texture ear hair than they do on the head, which happens a lot sometimes, um, I find that like thinning shears work really, really well in this area to help kind of blend those curls in to the straight part on the ears. So you just gotta use the tools available to kind of work to your advantage. But I, I find myself using thinning shears a lot on this type of coat too. All right, so now we're getting a little bit of a, a Bichon head here. Let's fluff it up and see where we're at. I know. 
All right, and lastly, I'm gonna make sure that the hair on the lips is trimmed in because a lot of times they'll suck this hair into their mouth and we're left with these kind of long, wet, straggly pieces here. So I'm holding his mouth shut, stop. And I'm gonna take these corners off here. Just touch them with your blending shears to round it in. So that way, again, when we look from the top of the dog, we're gonna see a circle this way too. We're not gonna have these big corners sticking out. And everything about a Bichon should be soft and round. So if you see hard angles anywhere, it's probably something that needs to go. All right, starting to look like a Bichon. And last thing, like I talked about earlier, I'm gonna go back and clean up a little bit more above the eyes because things seem to appear while you're working somewhere else. And we want this view to the eyes to be nice and clear and unimpeded by any little straggly hairs in there. Because the Bichon face is all about the expression and the eyes. All right. So he's being pretty fussy, so we're gonna call that a day. But that's just a really easy way to get a nice round Bichon head, just by combing side, trim it, other side, trim it, to the front and trim it. And that'll give you a nice round shape with not too much effort. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, thank you.